Oh, hello. You've uh, caught me wearing my Rutherford B. Hayes beard. Uh, I'm a little embarrassed, but I uh, wanted to say hello. My name's John Hendricks. I'm the illustrator of Rutherford B. Who Was He? Poems about our presidents. And I want to welcome you to my presidential laboratory, uh, also known as my studio in my basement, where the mice and crickets live. I've heard you want to have some uh, questions answered about the book Rutherford B. Who Was He? And I'm pleased to answer them for you. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to talk with you all. Thank you for reading my book. Meryl and I are so happy that you like it and enjoy it. So let's start with these questions. <coughs> Tell us about your research process in creating this book. Well, as you might guess, anytime you have to draw something historical, you have to do a lot of research. In this case, drawing presidents, I needed to know what they looked like. So I did a lot of picture research. I went to the library, I got pictures of the presidents, I got pictures of the clothes that they wore, pictures of their houses, what kinds of food they ate, their pets, their hair grooming equipment, right? Somebody like William McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt, you've got to know exactly what kind of clothes they're going to wear, right? So actually the research part of making a book is really fun. It's one of my favorite things, just becoming sort of a visual expert in the subject that I get to draw. So just like the writer has to know a lot about these people that we're writing about in terms of the facts, where they were born, what their jobs were, how long they lived, what they were really like. The author does that part and the illustrator gets to learn about it visually. So we both get to become little experts in these people uh, in our own way. All right, let's answer the second question. <clears throat> when did you first realize you wanted to be an author? You know, I have always loved books. Even from when I was a little kid, I loved reading books. Uh, I loved reading visual books like The Hobbit and the Narnia books. I remember really vividly reading David Macaulay's Cathedral, which was about the building of a cathedral in medieval Europe, and it was so magical to see how that came together, how the construction happened. I just remember pouring over that book, and actually what I didn't know at the time was that I'm a visual learner. I learn things through seeing pictures, so from a very young age, I, I just was obsessed with pictures and making pictures. Uh, I, even as I got older, I started making comics and writing my own stuff, and that's what led me into kids' books. So in this case, I illustrated this book with Marilyn, and I've written my own books. Uh, I've illustrated them, too, and it's so much fun to tell stories visually. It's just another kind of storytelling, almost like a play or a movie or a short film. There's different ways to tell stories, and picture books are one of them. Next question. <clears throat> what are the challenges of writing poetry or prose, fiction or nonfiction? Which are your preferences? Well, all my books are nonfiction. I think historical events are some of the most fascinating things that we can learn about as people, usually because they're stranger almost than stuff you could come up in your mind. This is a book that I just wrote and illustrated about the Christmas truce of 1914, completely true story that happened in World War I, where people decided, we're sick of war, we don't want to fight. It's a great story, you almost can't believe it really happened. And there's certain things about real historical storytelling that's exciting. It tells you about real life heroes, heroes you don't have to make up to believe that they're true, like Spider-Man or Superman, but real people like you and me that did heroic things. That's one reason I really love history. Um, uh, we've got a couple more questions. What's my next project? Oh, man, I got a good one. It's super secret. I should tell you about it, though. No, I won't. No, okay, I'll tell you about it. It's about a toad. This is McToad, and he mows a, a, an island called Tiny Island. That's his whole job. His whole job is to mow an island. Here, look. Here he is. So these are some of my drawings. There he is on a, putting the mower on a truck. Anyway, I'm working on that right now. Uh, don't tell my editors I'm really behind. Oh, wait, do, is this going on the internet? Uh, we better not put this up. Uh, can we can we cut this? We can't? We got one tick? Oh, okay. All 
All right, apparently we gotta just roll with that. Uh, so that's my next book. It'll be out next fall. It's called McToad Moe's Tiny Island, and it was written by someone I bet you know. His name's Tom Engelberger, a wonderful writer. He wrote the Origami Yoda books, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, what advice would I give writers today? Last question. <clears throat> I would say write about things that you love the most. If you love tennis, write about tennis. If you love drawing, write about artists, people that made pictures. Find the things in your life that you want to spend time thinking about. That could even be members of your family. You could write a story about your family, your brothers, your sisters, people that you find interesting. And just keep making stuff. Every day, make something new. That's what I tell my students. I teach people in college, and I tell them just every day, end the day with something new that wasn't there when you woke up. All right, it's uh, time for me to get my presidential beard to the dry cleaners. I've been wearing it a little too much this holiday season. So thanks for chatting, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm.